This is a picture of me from 2006. And you know, at the start of that year, I had what seemed to be the flu. I had all those usual symptoms that we all hate. The fever and the fatigue and the aches and pains and that general rundown feeling. But, you know, I was living in Chicago and it was winter, so it was flu season. For the record, Chicago is a beautiful city in the summer. But in the winter, Chicago looks like this. It is very cold. And I'm from California, and we don't like it when it gets very cold. On top of this, I worked in a hotel, so dealing with travelers from around the country and around the world. And I didn't have a car, so I relied on public transit. And between these two factors, you tend to get every cold or flu that passes by. And did I say this was Chicago in the winter? So I really didn't worry about it too much. But it did occur to me that I had a hard time kicking it. It just seemed to linger for a while. Fast forward to March of that year, I needed minor surgery. And as part of this preparation, you have to do some basic blood work. The surgeon doesn't do it, so they send you back to your GP or primary care physician, as we would say in the US. The HIV test was not part of this blood work, and it had only been three, maybe four months since my last test. But I really, really hate needles, and I will do anything I can to not get a needle in me. So the doctor and I agreed to go ahead and just get the HIV test done at the same time. This was a win-win. I didn't get that extra needle, and he and his staff didn't have to hear me when I came back three or four months later to get another test. Hey, you know, always take the win-win when you can. You don't get them very often. Anyway, this was the first time that I've had an HIV test where I wasn't worried or stressed at all about the outcome. It was a formality. That's it. Somewhere along this process, though, either in the surgeon's office or the GP's office, it was mentioned that this blood work could find certain forms of cancer, and that stuck with me in the back of my mind. My surgery was scheduled for the 17th of March, 2006, St. Patrick's Day. So while everyone else in the city would be out, dying the Chicago River Green, which they do every year, and having parades and parties and getting drunk, I was going to be in the hospital having this minor surgery. So basically getting that hungover feeling from all the medicines and the drugs they give you without having any of the fun of actually being drunk. But the day before the surgery was scheduled, I get a call from the surgeon's office saying that my doctor wouldn't release my blood work to them. And that I need to call the doctor to figure this out, otherwise they're going to have to cancel the surgery. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous now. Uh, but I thought, well, maybe I didn't fill out the release forms correctly or something, so it's just some paperwork thing. Let me call the doctor and find out what's going on. So I called the doctor's office and talked to the very nice receptionist, who then went and talked to the doctor and came back and said, you know, the doctor would really like to see you. Can you just come in right now? Generally, if a doctor wants you to drop everything and come in and talk to them right away, it's going to be bad news. And as I saw it, there were two distinct possibilities. Obviously, the HIV test had happened, so I knew that was a possibility, although I was still discounting that because I just had that other test three or four months before. And also that possibility I've been told about that these tests could turn up certain forms of cancer. And that was what really scared me because cancer runs in my family. So I left work and I went across town using public transportation, got to the doctor's office, sat in the waiting room, and then was taken to the examination room and sat there for a few minutes waiting for the doctor to come in. And this whole time I'm becoming more and more convinced that the doctor is going to come in and tell me I have cancer. And that is absolutely terrifying me. The weird thing is, though, from the moment the doctor opened the door and walked into the examination room, I knew exactly what he was going to say. I knew exactly what the diagnosis was going to be. And I think I actually freaked the doctor out because I was relieved when he told me I was HIV positive because I was just so convinced he was going to tell me I had cancer. But a sense of relief is not what the doctor expects when they're giving you that kind of news. Now, all of that was over 11 years ago, and my health is doing pretty well. I do probably have more troubles just because I'm getting a few years older now than I ever have from the HIV. The medical community has made an enormous amount of progress, so HIV is no longer a death sentence. There is no cure, but this is now a manageable condition. I do take medication every day. And as a result, I'm undetectable. That means that the basic tests they do when you're HIV positive can't even detect the virus in my system. So the virus is in check. It can't replicate or spread. I stay healthy, my immune system stays healthy, and I can't pass on the virus to anyone else. Now this seems like a great place to stop for now, but next time I want to go back and talk about why. Why I put myself at risk in the first place. 
So for now, thank you very much for listening, if you've made it this far. And until next time, be good. And if you can't be good, be wicked well. This is a picture of me from 2006. And you know at the start